Good morning, Algonquin. This is Mr. Messia. And Mr. Gah. With your morning news. But first, here's the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, Algonquin. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We start things off today with an announcement that Saga is going to be having a meeting coming up on Thursday. It's at 2 o'clock. Check your Google Classroom for a meet link, again, for Saga. Another announcement that Sean's run is taking place this weekend in a virtual format, and we want to honor the life of Sean French and his family by focusing on wellness and making healthy choices by participating in the 5K virtually here. Get outside, do some social distancing, and stay safe, but come try to complete a 5K and email your pictures or a video to Miss Keenan at her email address provided there. And if you're interested in learning more about Sean's Run, check out the link below. Go to seansrun.com. Yesterday, Tayshawn Frost shared with us a math challenge. He says a baseball and a bat cost $1.10. The bat costs a dollar more than the baseball. What does the baseball cost? Well, now's the time where you can take out your math work and you can look along here and we're gonna share the answers here today. Uh, here is the work that Tayshawn demonstrates for us on how to figure this one out. He did an outstanding job calculating the actual cost here. This is the baseball uh, is represented by the X as well as the bat. And when you put those together, Knowing that the bat costs a dollar more than the baseball, you can figure out that the baseball costs five cents and the bat must cost a dollar five. Great job, Tayshawn. That's a very challenging puzzle for us all here and uh, nice work figuring it out and showing your work and then showing the check too. Hopefully we had some fun with that. What's AMS think? Remember this is our survey topic that we look to see what AMS thinks about given topics. For yesterday's results, about your favorite NFL football team, looks like about actually exactly 33.3 or one third percent of the people who were surveyed say that the Giants are their favorite team. I and Mr. Massey can fully support that. Uh, next up was 21% that said uh, they don't really like football. So that's okay too. Today's survey topic is favorite musical, sponsored by Carly Hunter. Carly, thank you for sharing this one. Survey choices for favorite musical. We have Aladdin, Les Mis, Phantom of the Opera, Wicked, or Beauty and the Beast. If you have a different favorite musical, remember you can always add that in using the other option. If you have a survey topic idea, please email me at gellaj at apcsd.org. Tune in tomorrow for our results. Find out what you're reading, and this one is going to be a highlight from Anthony of the Percy Jackson and the Olympians, or the sea, of the sea of Monsters. Part of the series, seventh grader Percy Jackson has recently discovered that he is the son of Poseidon, making him half human and half god. And along with his demigod and a satyr friend, they must save his beloved camp half-blood from evil forces determined to destroy it. Anthony would highly suggest this book to his classmates. It's very interesting. Gives you a great picture in your head of what's happening. Nice job, Anthony. Thank you very much. You can check out many of the Lightning Thief stories right there on Sora. Check it out. Coming up on Thursday, that's tomorrow. It's Throwback Thursday here at Algonquin. We're gonna be highlighting a special video from back in the day. And we'll be sharing that with you during Thursday's announcements, a different format for our Thursday announcements coming up tomorrow. This quote really focuses on persistence. It says, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. It's your birthday, it's your birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Olivia. And then coming up tomorrow, Merrick, Olivia, and Jaden. Have a great day, guys. Caught being a warrior today from Miss Wood. She says Kylie, Juliana, Dominic, and Miss Michelle were big help in helping her figure out what was going on with her Google Form assignment. It wasn't working right. So 
thank you guys for always being there to help out. And ladies and gentlemen, let's remember school is not just a place. Let's make it a great day. Let's go Warriors. Next up, we're going to have a weekly segment where we're going to reconnect with the book Posted. And Ms. McGill is going to help us out with this with our One School, One Book program. Ms. McGill is going to kick things off by recapping the first several chapters of the book to get everybody on the same page, literally. And then we're going to move forward from there. She'll explain more in her video presentation that's coming up next. Good morning, Algonquin, and welcome to our One Book, One School update about Posted by John David Anderson. Hmm, where should we begin? How about where we left off? Oh, not everyone is in the same place. So let's go get you caught up by summarizing some of the first chapters. We begin by meeting the main character, Eric, who informs us he will tell us everything that happened with post-it notes and lockers at his middle school. We then flash back to the catalyst for this entire disaster. One student's nasty message about a teacher set the wheels in motion for the crackdown. Students are banned from bringing their phones to school. Yikes. We also meet Eric's friends, Bench, Dee Dee, and Wolf, and learn how each earned their nicknames. A bit of foreshadowing and the arrival of the first post-it note brings this chapter to an end. Eric, whose nickname is Frost, then describes the arrival of the variable, Rose. Rose is a force to be reckoned with, which is shown by all the students avoiding interacting with her at all costs. Except for Wolf, who awkwardly invites Rose to sit with them at lunch on that first day. This is an unprecedented move and not all of the friends are in agreement with this invitation. In the nudge, we find out that Frost, who's Eric, is a poet who does not want to share his poetry. We also learn how Frost and Dee Dee feel about Rose. As class ends, Dee Dee gets nudged pretty badly by a bully, and Eric notices a change in how he walks in the hallway after this incident. They both tried to dismiss the nudge, but the reader knows that this is not an isolated incident. In the fish chapter, we see the group of friends fragmented by Dee Dee continuing to invite Rose to sit at their lunch table. Bench is especially bothered by this. Leaving post-it notes has now become a school-wide phenomenon. Many of the messages are mean and could actually be seen as harassment. As the chapter concludes, we hear that some kids will be running the gauntlet, which is considered a suicidal bike ride down a dangerous hill. The reader knows that everyone will be there to see the accident that is waiting to happen. Running the gauntlet is compared to maneuvering through a minefield. Many students gather to see the ride, which is short-lived, as Evan's pedal catches on something and he wipes out. Bench and Eric are there as witnesses, and they find time to discuss Rose's presence at their lunch table and how they want things to return to normal. As the next chapter opens, the reader realizes that things will never be normal again. The revolution is upon us, and now everyone is leaving post-it notes on lockers. The group of friends continue to struggle with their new member, and Bench decides to change his lunch table. Rose is being called some pretty ugly names by students who use post-it notes. They call her names such as Moose. In The Bomb, Eric describes how difficult life was when his parents were divorcing. Rose is spending more time with the boys, and Bench is spending less. He often makes excuses for why he cannot join them, even if it's to work on their project. Eric can't help but notice how confident Rose is, as well as the growing friendship between Wolf and her. Everything is changing, and it's not all for the better. Do you know what an aphorism is? Well, in Chapter 11, The Sword, you can find out. In Posted, Post-it notes have gone viral, and as predicted, many are unkind. After you read Chapter 11 and, and learn what aphorisms are, take the AMS challenge and come up with a few aphorisms of your own. Remember, words are ghosts that can haunt us forever. So be kind to one another as you link or you use this link to submit your aphorisms. Happy reading. Enjoy Chapter 11. And I'll talk to you soon about the upcoming chapters. And that concludes this morning's announcements.
Remember, start to finish every day, we embody the warrior way.